Transformations that scale space along perpendicular axes are easy to think about. We can tell right away, for example, that this matrix scales areas by a factor of 6. Other transformations are more subtle. However, sometimes we just need to change our perspective. Matrices that scale space along the axes of some orthogonal grid are called orthogonally diagonalizable. The reason for this terminology is that if we use this new grid as our coordinate system, so like this point would have coordinates 1, 1, then the matrix describing the transformation with respect to this new coordinate system is diagonal. Note that the directions of the vectors running along these grid lines are preserved. Such vectors are called eigenvectors, and the equation form of this relation is AV equals lambda V. In other words, the image of V under A is a scalar multiple of V. Lambda in this equation represents an arbitrary real number. If we fill a matrix, capital V, with these eigenvectors as columns, then A times V is equal to lambda 1 v1 in the first column and lambda 2 v2 in the second column, which is also equal to the product of v and this diagonal matrix which will denote capital lambda. If we multiply on the right by v inverse on both sides, then we get that a is equal to v lambda v inverse. And since the columns of V are perpendicular, the inverse is the same as the transpose of V. This means that we can also write that A is equal to V lambda V prime. The spectral theorem tells us that a matrix must be symmetric in order to be orthogonally diagonalizable. Furthermore, every symmetric matrix is orthogonally diagonalizable. But what about non-symmetric matrices? Well, for any m by n matrix A, the matrix A transpose A is symmetric because the transpose of A transpose A is A transpose times the transpose of A transpose, which is the same as A transpose times A. So we can diagonalize A transpose A as V lambda V inverse. And that allows us to define a matrix which will denote the square root of A transpose A to be V times the square root of lambda times V inverse, where the square root of lambda is the matrix obtained by square rooting all of diagonal entries of lambda. This makes sense because the square root of A prime A times the square root of A prime A is equal to A prime A. What's the point of considering square root of a prime a? Well, here's the key idea. a v has the same length as square root of a prime a times v for any vector v. The reason is that the squared length of a v can be rewritten as the squared length of square root of a prime a v. In other words, wherever v goes, square root of a prime a v necessarily maps to a point on the same circle. In other words, there's a rotation taking a v to square root of a prime a v. This rotation is the same for all the v's as it turns out. So in fact, a is equal to r times square root of a prime a for some rotation matrix r. We can take this equation further by rewriting the square root of a prime a as v square root lambda v prime. This first matrix, Rv, is an orthogonal matrix. Square root of lambda is a diagonal matrix. And v prime is also an orthogonal matrix. It's customary to call this first product, u, the diagonal part, sigma, and the last part is called v transpose. This means that we don't need a special name for matrices that map one set of orthogonal grid lines to another. Every matrix does this. 
This is called the singular value decomposition. Graphically, we can think of the SVD as mapping the domain of A to the codomain of A one map at a time. B transpose rotates or reflects the axes, then sigma scales the axes, and U rotates and reflects back. The simplest way to think about this is to draw, draw grid lines in the lower left part of this figure and then map the grid lines through the figure from there. Notice that the way that A stretches space is intrinsic in the entries of the matrix sigma. These entries are called singular values and their product gives the volume scale factor of A, in other words, the factor by which A transforms volumes.